This is Tech and Politics, and I am Andreas Jungherr. Welcome to the podcast accompanying the lecture series Digital Media and Politics and Society at the University of Bamberg. In this episode, we focus on algorithmic action and fairness. Algorithms need not stop at providing insight or advice. Some also can take automated action. These algorithms are designed to process data, make decisions, and execute actions without requiring human intervention at every step. Examples come from different areas. Algorithms can allow machines to move and act. This provides the basis for self-driving cars, where algorithms evaluate data from multiple sensors, such as cameras, LiDAR and radar, to navigate, decide when to accelerate, brake or turn, and to react to unforeseen situations. The same goes for their use in agricultural machinery, such as automated tractors, where algorithms decide on when and where to plant, water or harvest crops. Another more controversial example is their use in military and civilian drones, where algorithms allow them to fly specific routes, adjust to environmental conditions and even decide on targets. Algorithms are also used to autonomously shape and act in digital information environments or markets. We already encountered algorithmic recommendation systems. These recommendations can provide choices for the users. Alternatively, recommended content can automatically be displayed, for example, through autoplay on Spotify, YouTube or TikTok. In these cases, algorithms come to autonomously decide on what content to display next and only leave the user to cancel the playback instead of actively choosing between suggestions, thereby reducing user agency. Additionally, algorithms are also used to monitor and moderate digital communication environments by autonomously detecting and sometimes removing or hiding content that violates policies. Algorithms can also analyze and act in markets. A prominent example is online advertising, where algorithms decide which ads to show to which users and when. These display decisions are based on user profiles and their behavior on the one side, and ad auctions on the other, determining a demand-driven price for advertisers to reach users with specific profiles. Another prominent example comes from the use of algorithms for high-frequency trading, HFT, where algorithms can decide to buy or sell stocks in fractions of a second based on real-time market data. Automated algorithms are also used to manage large, interconnected systems. This includes smart grids, where algorithms are used to monitor and balance energy consumption across a grid, dynamically adjusting energy distribution based on demand. On the level of the individual household, this translates into the use of smart thermostats, where algorithms help devices learn user preferences over time and adjust heating or cooling settings autonomously to optimize for comfort and energy efficiency, and smart homes more general, where algorithmically enabled systems can decide when to turn on lights, lock doors, or activate security systems based on user behavior and external factors. For these and other cases like them, algorithms promise to increase the efficiency of systems, manage complex interdependencies between subsystems and devices, allow the management and monitoring of large-scale systems that are beyond the control of individuals and the automation of tedious or dangerous work. These are powerful promises that can increase people's productivity using algorithmically enabled devices. The automated, data-driven management of large-scale systems promise greater coordination as well as fewer waste. There are clearly many opportunities for algorithmic action. At the same time, the fully autonomous action of algorithms raises concerns. Some are the same concerns that we have encountered with algorithmic insight or support. But we also have additional concerns that are connected to the question of scale, responsibility and transparency. Algorithms can act at vast scale and speed, much beyond human capabilities. This brings opportunities 
as with the automated management of smart grids, connected Internet of Things devices, or smart cities. This promises efficiency gains in resource expenditure, as for example energy, and timeliness of decisions. On the other hand, scale and speed can contribute to wrong decisions or those with unintended consequences to be executed automatically at a scale that are difficult to detect, monitor or control in time. Algorithmic damages might thus accrue without the opportunity for timely control or rollback. There's also the question of responsibility of automated algorithmic action. If an algorithm makes a mistake, who is responsible? The company providing the algorithm? The company implementing the algorithm in the product? Or is it the user? The most obvious example of the responsibility conundrum are self-driving cars, where the question of liability in case of algorithmically caused accidents is unclear. Finally, there remains the question of interrogability. Scale and speed in action, as well as the integration in machine-human assemblages, makes it in case of error difficult to assess how and why decisions were made and what degree of the error lies with the underlying algorithm or other elements of the assemblage. Let's have a look at the example of algorithmic trading. Finance is an example for an industry heavily shaped by algorithms. In fact, hopes for the replacement of humans and the automation of financial markets go at least back to the early 1970s. Today, algorithms support trading in various areas of financial markets. Most prominent here is one type of algorithmic trading, high-frequency trading, HFT for short. In his review of the economic literature on algorithmic trading, Albert J. Menkveld defines algorithmic traders as, and I quote, all traders who use computers to automatically make trade decisions. An example is one who aims to minimize the price impact of a large order that has to be executed. Such an order is typically executed through a series of smaller child orders that are sent to the market sequentially, end quote. High-frequency traders are a particular subgroup of algorithmic traders. HFT run on, and here I quote again, extremely fast computers running algorithms coded by traders who trade for their own account, end quote. This category of algorithmic trader has received much attention and press. Back to Mankfeld, and I quote, The key distinguishing feature of HFTs is the relative speed advantage for trading a particular security. One reason for such an advantage is information technology that enables them to quickly generate signal for the massive amount of public information that reaches the market every millisecond. Examples are press releases by companies, governments and central banks, analyst reports and trade information including order book updates, not only for the security of interest, but also for correlated securities. End quote. The case of algorithmic trading is interesting, as here different concerns meet. For one, algorithmic trading is often associated with public fears about loss of control about algorithms and markets, or unintended consequences of uncontrolled algorithms running wild. If trading algorithms act in scale and speed beyond human control or interventions, markets can crash, firms get damaged, and private fortunes, big and small, can get lost. Algorithmic crashes are not merely academic thought examples. There are many examples for algorithmic crashes, large and small, some of them very dramatic. Often forensics of the events show that algorithms acted too fast, had unknown or overlooked errors and contributed to effects that were difficult to identify or disentangle even after the event. At the same time, algorithmic trading can also serve investors considerably by removing friction from trading. Algorithmic trading thus shows both the opportunities as well as the risks of automated algorithmic action. 
Let's return to our argument. Algorithmic action thus clearly holds vast potential for more efficient management of systems and markets. At the same time, the more systems rely on algorithmic action, the greater the dangers of runaway mistakes that might be consequential but difficult to identify and roll back. This might be an opportune time to discuss risks and fears associated with algorithms in society in greater detail. As we have seen, computer algorithms are used in ever more societal areas. This raises broad concerns. While in principle, algorithms provide a set of clearly defined steps to solve a given problem, the current uses have raised the question whether this is still the case. We've already briefly encountered some of these concerns, but some merit deeper discussion. In the following sections, we will focus on concerns about fairness, trapping people in algorithmically constructed bubbles and loops, the alignment problem, and the opaqueness of algorithmic decision-making and its consequences. Let's start with fairness. Once algorithms start shaping people's option spaces, the question of fairness emerges. Algorithms make, or at least support, decisions about people spanning various areas of their life. They assign people's credit ratings, they evaluate their job applications, they assess the likelihood of them engaging in criminal activity, or algorithms administer welfare benefits. These algorithmic assessments and decisions matter for the choices people have and the way they are treated by institutions of authority. This makes it important that algorithms are treating people fairly. But what is fairness? Let's try a definition. A decision can be called fair if people who resemble each other regarding the decision task at hand consistently are treated the same. If people with specific characteristics not relevant to the task are consistently treated differently from those they otherwise resemble, the decision can be called unfair or biased. Take credit scores, for example. If people with a steady job and high income consistently get good credit scores, the underlying process can be called fair. A steady job and high income are clearly directly relevant to the task of assessing whether people will be able to repay a loan. But if people with a steady job and high income who happen to be women get a lower credit rating, the decision process would be unfair. Clearly, gender should not be a variable directly relevant to the ability of a debtor to repay a loan. Generally, different outcomes are not necessarily signs of an unfair process. But decision-making becomes unfair once differences emerge along characteristics not directly relevant to the decision task at hand. Let's get back to the argument. As we have seen before, Algorithmic decision support for experts promises to improve on some of the limitations of human decision-making. With regard to fairness, psychological biases and cognitive heuristics stand out as potentially skewing human decision-making. Both might render decisions unfair by not directly relevant factors. Recruiters might be looking at the school applicants graduated from as a heuristic for how to interpret their transcripts and infer the likelihood of them succeeding in a firm. Algorithms can take more information into account and produce replicable predictions for the likelihood of candidates succeeding in a firm. These can be rule-based algorithms that consider many different factors prior identified as being relevant, or these can be machine learning algorithms that in data-rich contexts can identify signals predicting success that modelers were not aware of beforehand. Algorithms can support decision-makers in making decisions fairer across various domains, either by applying complicated models consistently across contexts, or by identifying new rules and models based on data. They also allow decision-makers access to large amounts of evidence by incorporating it in models and their output. Additionally, they allow for the systematic auditing of decision-making processes they are modeling. This potentially makes it easier to identify hidden biases and to address them. But 
algorithmic decision support also carries specific risks to fairness that need to be accounted for. The prominence of algorithmic decision-making and decision support has led many academics, commentators and practitioners to put special attention on the question of algorithmic fairness. Are algorithms contributing to fairer and more explicable decisions, or do they continue or even worsen discriminatory practices? Are algorithms treating all people alike, or are they treating people with specific characteristics, behaviors, or group affiliations worse than others? In the examination of algorithmic fairness, two important dimensions emerge. One potential driver of algorithmic unfairness stems from configurations of institutional or organizational uses of algorithmic decision systems and the associate policy goals. The other stems from the data algorithms use to build models and base their assessments on. On a foundational level, the fairness of algorithmic decision support systems depends on the structural configuration of their use and the goals of the organizations and institutions using them. Importantly, organizations can use algorithmic decision support to enable them to form better decisions. What better decisions means in this context is, of course, open to interpretation. Some will try and pursue the best possible decision for a given task and very actively consider the consequences for and welfare of people subject to algorithmic decisions. Others will interpret better simply as more efficient, cheaper or better for them without necessarily considering broader implications. For those in the first category, algorithms producing unfair results would be an issue to address, monitor and solve. For those in the second category, unfair outcomes do not matter much as long as the algorithm achieves its primary goals for the organization. Unfairness resulting from these uses of algorithms would thus not be primarily a technological problem with a technological fix, but results from the organizational goals of algorithm use. This is of course not to say that unfairness cannot result from the use of algorithms by organizations generally trying to achieve fair outcomes. But in these cases, organizations can set up dedicated auditing units, processes and provide transparency of uses and outcomes for outsiders. In the best case, this could lead to unfair results being temporary and subject to improvement. Unfairness can also be a result from data and modeling choices. Importantly, patterns of past discrimination can manifest in data algorithms are trained on. For example, if police officers stop black motorists and pedestrians routinely with greater likelihood than whites, they are more likely to pick up on otherwise undetected offenses by blacks than whites, for example, carrying illegal drugs. This does not necessarily mean that whites are less likely to carry illegal drugs, they are simply less likely to be caught during routine stops. But over time, police records will contain a greater number of cases of blacks who carried illegal drugs than whites. An algorithm predicting the likelihood of a person carrying drugs could thus easily use race as a predictor. Policing decisions based on the output of such an algorithm will thus continue and over time reinforce a police department's discriminatory practices. This is just one intuitive example, but data can contain other more hidden forms of bias or discrimination as well. This includes differences between gender roles and job prospects in societies expressed in tax corpora, racial discrimination expressed in medical data, or discriminatory patterns in grading. The identification of bias within data sets and the avoidance of biases in algorithmic assessments is a very rich and promising area of computer science and interdisciplinary research. The question of fairness within algorithmic decision-making is a core question for both computer science and applied fields developing and evaluating algorithmic support systems in various contexts. As shown, questions include aspects of the specific setup and consolation of algorithmic decision-making and support in organizational and institutional contexts, and technical questions associated with coverage and biases 
within datasets and specific modeling choices. This is an important area that is bound to grow in prominence with the growing use of algorithms in society and more pervasive awareness of them and their consequences. But let's take a break for now. In the next episode, we will continue our discussion of risks and fears associated with algorithms in society. These are bubbles and loops, alignment and opaqueness. We will close our discussion of algorithms by examining what can be done to improve them and their uses for society. As always, the script to this episode can be found online on the course website, digitalmedia.andreasjungherr.de. There, you will find detailed sources, references to further reading, links, and preparatory questions for the exam. This was Tech and Politics, a podcast by the Chair for Political Science, especially Digital Transformation at the University of Bamberg. I am Andreas Jungherr. Have fun reading and see you soon.